Hello, I'm Trisha Fugelstad, a K-5 elementary art teacher in Arlington Heights, a suburb of Chicago. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to you about my technology-rich and connected art room. I want to share my definition of what this means, how it looks, and what benefits it's brought my art education students. There's nothing extraordinary about my art room itself. Instead, it's the learning that happens when the students energize it. Let's take a peek. It's a My district has embraced the TPEC framework, which is the interplay of the knowledge of what to teach, the best practices involved in how to teach it, and the technology tools to effectively teach it. Using technology is not my goal. I only use it when I see it's a better way to deliver content and engage my students, or enhance their learning experience. As the art teacher, I teach every student in my building, whether they're ready for art class or not. And using technology is a wonderful way to reach every learner. What does it mean to be technology rich? To me, it means tools are at your disposal. You can plan your technology lessons knowing that the equipment is available for you, whether that means an interactive what whiteboard is installed into your classroom, or a class set of iPads are available for you to secure ahead of time. Either way, teachers are more likely to use technology if they know it's going to be there when they're ready to use it. You don't have to be in a rich district to have a technology-rich classroom. There are many grant writing opportunities available to teachers to enrich their classrooms.
These are some of the grants I've written and received over the years. We also do fundraising through our online art gallery on Artsonia. Not only is it a working portfolio for each of my students to watch their growth and learning over time, but it gives families a chance to purchase products featuring their child's art. The company donates back 20% of each purchase to the art program. This money is what went towards buying our projector, interactive whiteboard, digital cameras, and digital portfolio supplies for our graduating students. We also use technology to raise money for more technology. My students entered an online student video contest called 21st Century Connections to win technology prizes. Here is the video they entered that won first prize nationwide. What does it mean to be a connected classroom? Well, Dr. Craig Rowland, University of Florida art education professor and founder of ArtEd 2.0, once said, the things that happen in Trisha's art room don't stay in Trisha's art room. And this is because I share our learning online. Because we are technology rich and connected in our art room, many of my students' creative projects have an authentic audience. For example, the story of Young Slappy Brush. We began making art-related student-created videos in the early 2000s and posting them on my website, calling them Bugleflix. I received an email from an art teacher in Texas who had seen one of our Bugleflix and requested that we make a movie about taking care of paintbrushes. She said, this is a universal issue for all art educators, and it's desperately needed. So my fifth grade students took up the challenge and created a story about a once handsome brush who succumbed to the evils of slappiness in the hands of a careless artist. This musical tragedy was created out of paintbrushes in the back of the art room. The resulting movie was so charming that I looked for another opportunity for them to display their work, and we entered it into a local film festival. The students were invited on stage to talk about the movie-making process, and also again to receive their Best of Show award. Soon, Young Slappy Brush made its Chicago debut at the Chicago International Children's Film Festival. It made its world debut at the Kids for Kids Fest in Naples, Italy, and it made its Southern Hemisphere debut at the Little Big Shot Festival in Australia, where it was shown to audiences at the Sydney Opera House. The following year, Young Slappy Brush, the actual brush actor from the movie, began traveling the country sharing his message of caring for paintbrushes. This movie is available in our Fugal Flick collection. Please take a moment and watch it sometime. Many of our Fugal Flicks have had opportunities for authentic audiences from festivals to websites. Our growing online connections are growing my students' opportunities for authentic audiences from local newspapers to edublog awards. 
Discussing prayers and art is something I do with my fourth grade boys and Cub Scouts. For many years, they breeze into the art room on their way out to recess, and they asked me for one minute to talk about careers and art. Needless to say, it was never a very rich learning experience. So one year, I decided to wrangle the pack and have them make a video on the topic. We used a storyboard, and the students each highlighted two careers. So it was very brief. So brief that I decided that the intro should be in the style of 60 minutes, but called 30 seconds. And so I worked on trying to play with the technology that I had to make it work. And when I was able to figure it out, I tweeted about it. My tweet was discovered by Joe Brennan, who blogs for Discovery Educators Network. He asked me how I did it, so I made a screen recording showing him. He wrote a blog post about my screen recording and careers in art. Well, Martin Levins follows Joe Brennan's blog. Martin writes for another technology publication, Macworld Australia. He asked if he could write about our careers in art video and the tutorial I made to show how to do it. We entered Careers in Art into a student video contest hosted by NextVista.org. The movie was screened to a live audience of conference attendees in Nebraska, and they chose Careers in Art as the winner for the student video contest. And later, we found out that Careers in Art was chosen as the best student video of 2011. My fourth grade students coined the new phrase, that's so shark dog. And this refers to a piece of art that was transformed from a mistake into something brilliant. When Mickey's first attempt to draw a dog didn't work out, he put it aside and later created another dog that he would use for his pop art project. But the discarded dog had a definite appeal. I showed Mickey's discarded dog sketch to another fourth grade class and they all agreed that this dog was amazing, so much so that it deserved its own theme song. And of course I agreed. I used Shark Dog as my example for this pop art project inspired by Andy Warhol, who also would have agreed that transforming mistakes is brilliant. Each group of fourth graders contributed in some way to our video theme song, either by writing lyrics, singing, or dancing in the final video. Have you seen Shark Dog, the new pop art craze? Once you see him, I'm sure you'll be amazed. Shark Dog, he barks his sunrise. Shark Dog, with blades for green eyes. Shark Dog, his veins as sharp as his fangs. Shark Dog, I wanna go where he hangs. Shark Dog, now that pop art. Shark dog. Let's get that shark dog. Oh my god, shark dog. Let's get that shark dog. I wrote about our shark dog experience in eSchool News. And when it was published, I began hearing from teachers around the world who used our shark dog video to encourage their students to transform their mistakes. Like this post from an art teacher in Wisconsin. He uses shark dog as a symbol of I can when her students say I can't. And this limousine cat was sent to me from an art teacher in South Carolina as an example of her student's brilliant mistake. She tells her students if dogs could look like sharks, then cats could be as long as limousines. I also heard from a teacher in Shanghai, China, who wrote a post on his blog about shark dog. He asked if he could have the image made into a t-shirt for himself and his daughter because they all agree that mistakes can be so shark dog. Not only fugal flicks gain viewership, but sometimes our art projects receive attention from unexpected audiences because of our connected classroom. This Nuffle Bunny Pigeon Book inspired project from the author Mo Willems received attention when we tweeted the project to him. And my students were amazed that their projects were viewed by the author who inspired them. A similar thing happened for my second graders who learned about Lester Fizz, bubblegum artist.
They created a graphic design that mimicked the cover of this children's story by Ruth Spiro. Ruth decided to come for a visit in person and stayed in touch later through Twitter. Our online art gallery on Artsonia gives my students unique audiences for their artwork. This past spring, I was invited to submit four images to exhibit on a 30-foot LED screen in the heart of New York City. I've also connected with my local PBS station and was able to showcase my students' Dr. Seuss-themed artwork on TV during the month of Dr. Seuss's birthday celebration and Read Across America. They used our artwork to introduce their Cat in the Hat program. The Cat in the Hat is overjoyed with the Seussification you've employed. Miss Bugles, that sure makes learning fun. As PBS's Teacher of the Year, she's number one. This past school year, I received my grant for a glass class set of iPad styluses and 100 copies of an animation app called Doink. I designed a figure drawing and animation lesson for my third graders using these tools on our iPads. I wrote posts about the progress on my blog and tweeted them to the app company. They liked our project so much that they promoted their program with our project with a bunch of blog posts and tweets. Again, our connected classroom expanded my students' audience. In a similar way, I've communicated with iPivo, the maker of our USB document camera, to share with them some of the wonderful ways that their equipment has helped enhance the learning in our art room. This led to an interview that showcases our art program on their blog. I have so many more stories to tell you, but not enough time. So let me leave you with one last thought. Go ahead and open up your classroom, and you'll be opening up opportunities for your students. Push up your sleeves and create a connected classroom. Yeah.